Welcome back to our unboxing series. Today we're going to talk about the Similarray P1. And in the video, we are going to review the special features of this pump, the different parts, how to assemble it and use it, and also some care and cleaning and more. By the way, if you haven't gotten your pump through insurance yet, feel free to reach out to us at acceleron.com order. The P1 has a lot of great special features. The first one being that the P in P1 stands for portable. So it is a really small motor, so it's really lightweight and very portable. You can even fit it in like a sweatshirt pocket or something small like that. So the next special feature for the Similarly P1, you may notice right away. They both are the same pump on my table, but one is what it looks like when you get it right out of the box, and the other one is if you purchase separately a skin decal that goes on the side and the front of the pump motor. Now they have lots of different options available. This is just one of them. And it is, again, a separate purchase, but it's something that just can make the pump a little bit more attractive to you or if you want it to suit more of your personality. So the skin is just a fun option if you want to personalize your pump. The Similarly P1 has a two-year warranty. The two-year warranty is on the pump motor itself, and it covers things where it's not creating suction, it's not charging, but not necessarily like if we drop it. Uh, the accessories have a limited 90-day warranty. So it also has a built-in rechargeable battery. So it charges just like a cell phone. You can use it while it's plugged in or charge it and then use it on the go. It also has a touch screen. So this pump will actually turn on and you can change it just by touching the screen right on there. And we'll also talk about the fact that it has a locking feature for that touch screen. You may notice that you can see this screen even if it were dark because it has have the LCD display. Another feature is the duckbill valve. So it comes with two duckbill valves, which I'll kind of talk about a little bit more soon, but the duckbill valves are really short and sturdy, so nothing tips over when you're emptying your bottle after a pumping session and you're putting that down on your clean surface. Now, when it comes to the brush shields, you'll see that there's four on my table, and that's because four of them actually come in your collection kit and, and with your pump all together. Now, the reason why they have four is because there are two size options. So similarly, we'll give you a set of 24 millimeter and a set of 21 millimeter, but they even go beyond that. They also have what they call the get the right fit guarantee. So if the 24 and the 21 millimeter don't work for you, they will send you a separate size to try for free. Let's move into how to assemble the parts and what they are. So we're gonna start with the actual bottle itself. So it is a five fluid ounce storage capacity bottle that you have two of them in the kit, and it is a wide neck. Now, wide neck matters because there is a nipple, they provide you with two. So those wide neck nipples are what are going to fit onto your bottle specifically. You have a cap here so that the, if there's milk in your bottle, the nipple won't get dirty or leak. Now, if you choose not to use this as a feeding bottle, you have the option of taking this out so you have the open circle in this piece here. So there's a little handle there. That's going to face up so that you can use a storage bottle versus that feeding bottle. To assemble the pump collection kit, we're gonna start with our bottle again. That's our base. And then we move into our breast shield. So the breast shield itself is going to have the duckbill valve go right in that bottom circle there. Now it's going to go inside that circle and you wanna make sure it is fully pushed on and now that line, the bottom of the duckbill valve, doesn't need to face in any certain direction. So don't even worry about that. What you are going to do then is put your bottle right on, and then we have our backflow protector. So the backflow protector is actually three pieces. I wanna show you how to assemble it because if we assemble it incorrectly, it can fall apart while you're pumping and it can be frustrating. You're going to start with the smaller of the clear plastic circles, and you're gonna face that protrusion away from you. Then I want you to take the white silicone piece with the lip facing away from you and bring that around the back. Now it is fully sealed all the way around the edge and we go to our larger clear plastic circle. This is going to have the protrusion facing you, bring that around the back and again making sure that it's all the way sealed all the way around. This is going to insert into the back of your breast shield in that circle here. You may notice that one side might be really loose and the other side fits nice and snug and that's how you know it's facing the right direction. That should touch the wall of that backflow protector. And the other side is where your tubing will connect. Your tubing also should touch the wall of that backflow protector. Now the tubing has no adapter on the end. This tubing is going to connect to the side of your pump motor. 
So the Simulry P1 offers single or double pumping, so you can pump one or both sides at the same time. On the side of the pump, they have two ports here. You can see that one of them is open, so if you're going to single pump, you only put one tubing in and you only assemble one collection kit. You can pump on whatever your preferred side is. If you were to double pump, you're just going to take this little silicone cap off, which by the way, if you ever lose this, just give Simulry a call and they'll help you replace it. If you're going to double pump, you want to make sure that that cap is off. You put both sets of tubing and both collection kits on, and then you can pump both breasts at the same time. Now, one reminder is if you're single pumping, you need to make sure that that cap is plugged in there because if it's not, it'll pull in air and you won't have suction on the side you're trying to pump on. One thing to note about your duckbill valve is that it has a little opening on the bottom and that's there so that the milk can enter your bottle, but it's also there so the milk doesn't go back up towards your breast shield. So when you are using it, you may notice if you go to pump, if it's been a while using the same one, you might need to replace it. Now, you'll know in one of two ways whether or not you need to replace it. You may have no suction on the side that you're trying to pump on, or when you're cleaning it, you may notice that that duckbill valve has a little bit of stretching or a tear to it, because at rest, it should have little to no opening there. When you look at the front of your Similary P1, you'll notice you have a mode button, a power button, and an up and down arrow, and those arrows are going to help you change your suction strength. At the top of the pump, you have the port for your charging cord, and then the side is where you have the ports for your tubing. To turn the pump on, you're going to press and hold the power button for just about two to three seconds. You'll see your screen pop up where you have an indicator for your battery life because this was already charged. You'll see what mode you're in, what level suction you're on, and a timer. Now with this pump being a touch screen, they also have a lock option. If you press and hold the mode button for five seconds, you'll see this little lock come on here and you'll notice that I can't touch and change my settings. To take the lock off, you're going to do the same exact thing, hold for five seconds. When using your Simulry pump, you actually wanna start in massage mode with a little hand. You're going to start in massage mode and you're going to change your suction strength or your level to what is comfortable for you. There are five options total. To find the level that is comfortable for you, you're going to start at one and go up and up and up until it is uncomfortable and then back down one. So you're using your highest comfort strength. You're only in massage mode until you've had your letdown or your milk starts to flow. Once your milk starts to flow, you're going to change the mode to expression mode. And the only thing you do here is change your suction strength again. Now before we had one to five and now we have one to 10. So this is a hospital strength pump. So it does have a high suction ability, but just because it has 10 levels doesn't mean you have to go, doesn't mean you have to go all the way up to 10. So you're gonna do the same thing you did before where start at one and go up and up and up until it's uncomfortable and then back down one. This is where you'll spend the majority of your pumping time. Again, you have a timer here. So typical pumping sessions are around 15 minutes. When you finish pumping, all you need to do is touch the power button just once. You'll notice also that the Similary P1 has a memory. So it will remember what different level you had in each mode. So now we're gonna talk about cleaning of your parts for your Similary pump. When you do cleaning, we typically recommend following the guidelines set out by the CDC. The general guidelines are to clean your pump collection kit after every pumping session. So if you pump twice a day, you're washing it twice a day. And also to sanitize your pump at least once a day. So Similary also follows those same guidelines. When you have those guidelines, there are different options for how you clean and sanitize it though. So let's go through those. First, two options for cleaning your parts but you're only cleaning what comes in contact with milk. So if this is my assembled collection kit, due to our backflow protector, the tubing is not meant to come in contact with milk. So as long as there's nothing in here and it's clean and dry, it does not need to be cleaned after every pumping session like all the other parts do. When we're cleaning, no matter which of the two methods you choose, you're gonna fully disassemble, obviously store your milk however you prefer, and fully disassembling means taking apart all three pieces of your backflow protector, and then also removing the duckbill valve. The two options are the sink and the dishwasher. 
Before either, you're gonna take your separated parts and rinse off any excess breast milk droplets that might be on there. For washing in the sink, you're gonna take a clean separate bowl from the rest of your food dishes, put in some warm soapy water and let your parts soak for five minutes. Wash as you normally would, rinse with clear water, and then you set them to the side to air dry. If you're going to use the dishwasher, again, rinse off any excess breast milk that might be on there and put everything on the top rack of the dishwasher. And they have to stay on the top rack because if they go below the top rack, it can be too hot and it can actually affect the parts themselves. So they have to stay on the top rack. Once they're done in the dishwasher and it finishes its cycle, you want to take them out pretty quickly. You don't want them to sit in that wet environment and then they can air dry. So those are your two options for cleaning. The other thing that they recommend, CDC and Similary, are to sanitize your pump parts at least once a day. Doesn't matter when, morning, afternoon, or night, whatever works for you. But this is especially important for any babies under three months old, any babies with a sensitive immune system, or any babies born prematurely. There are four main options for sterilizing your parts. The first one is boiling. So boiling's really easy. You just take a large stock pot. You're gonna take all your separated parts, which are already clean, because you would have washed them after your last pumping session, and you're gonna put them in a pot of boiling water. Now for similarly, all of these parts are okay to go in the boiling water for five minutes. After the five minutes, you take them out and they're going to air dry pretty quickly because they were in such hot water. The next option is a standalone sterilizer. So if you have a sterilizer that sits on your counter, you can use one of those. Make sure you follow the manufacturer recommendations for that sterilizer um, and then air dry if needed. The third option is a micro steam bag. So some brands make bags that look like large sandwich baggies. You put all your parts in, a little bit of water, and then you just microwave it and it steams them to sanitize them. The last option is the dishwasher. So you can put all of these parts on the top rack again in the dishwasher for a sterilized cycle. Uh, this is typically a longer cycle, so it does take a little bit more time. So just something to note. Acceleron really is here to support you throughout this journey. So we're doing this unboxing series for you because we really like to support you from prenatal all the way through postpartum. It's not really just here's your pump and good luck. We wanna make sure you're supported in using the pump, making sure you have questions answered and everything around that journey. So we actually, we have the unboxing series and we also have other virtual support options available right on our website at acceleron.com. We have private consults that are virtual through Zoom and we can talk one-on-one -on -one with you about how to use your pump. We can talk about your return to work or your flange fit because we mentioned how important that is. Uh, we also have a pumping support group and other things for you. On the website itself, we have videos, documents, links to different support services. And so please don't ever hesitate to reach out. Again, we really wanna make sure you're supported through this entire journey.